been a, uh, a clear sounding word in this Bible conference, uh, just through the preaching and the ministry. And so we have a number of announcements we'd like to make tonight. Uh, this first one is a little bit uh, different, but we want to make an announcement this evening. As you know, about uh, uh, two weeks ago or so, there was a terrible earthquake that hit uh, in central Mexico. It had actually an effect on Mexico City, a very powerful effect also on the city of Puebla. The epicenter of this uh, uh, earthquake was a town called Jojutla, J-O-J-U-T-L-A, the state of Morelos in Mexico. And uh, when this happened, it absolutely devastated that uh, uh, city. Uh, Brent, you have uh, uh, some pictures there. Let me see here. There we go, you can see, and uh, this city here is called Hohulo, and uh, there's a, a, do you have the pictures of the earthquake? I want them to see that. Uh, the, uh, you're getting way behind Brad, there you go. And so there it is. Uh, these are the, some of the pictures, some of the damage, just leave that there. And so your time said that half the buildings in the city were destroyed. And the Apatlaco Church uh, began to reach out there and began to do some outreaches in ministry. I don't know if you get a picture of one of those outreaches. And so they set that up, just raced into that city and set that up. They have begun to see a, a, a revival. People are coming and getting saved. And I was talking with Pastor uh, Castaneda, and uh, their desire is to respond, just as our pastor preached last night. So tonight, uh, we want to announce going into Jujutla, out of the Mexico City churches, Jaid and Carla Flores. Now they are, they could not come, they don't have visas to come, but have responded. And so we um, are going to uh, announce them tonight and part of our offering, we're going to immediately send them in uh, to start a church right now in this desperate place. I'm not talking about humanitarian aid. We believe in that, that's fine. We're not, they're not there for humanitarian aid. They're there to win souls for Jesus. Uh, they are responding to a need. As Pastor Mitchell just preached, they just simply, uh, they, there's a desperation. They've gone in, they're already seeing people, and we want to uh, help and say yes. We are prepared to act immediately and go in there and set up shop. And so uh, we want to uh, thank God for that opportunity. We want to announce tonight going into Havana, Cuba, uh, Ralph and Iris Vasquez from Caltech. Sergei Pohovsky in St. Petersburg, Sergei Pohovsky had a burden for Cuba. I remember talking to him when he was a disciple, and so he taught himself Spanish, uh, went to Cuba, pioneered him, God raised up a church, he was arrested, he was put in jail, uh, and was in jail, I think, for two years, but he had discipled a, a man, a good brother named Alex, so, and uh, there's a very powerful church there, and in the last uh, uh, very short period of time, I believe this is the fourth church to go in the last year and a half. Uh, and uh, God has opened Cuba. We don't know how long it will remain open, uh, but what an opportunity. We thank God for this coming. Yeah. Yeah. pioneer of a brand new church in Kochi, India, Jeremiah Geneva Wacker. Yeah. talking about India for a long time, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the door uh, began to open. Uh, remember, India is around 1.2 billion people, 
We had 25 fellowship churches there. The Indian leader is here, Pakir Raj. Amen. I, I, I hope this doesn't sound offensive, but I, I, I mentioned to somebody that uh, most of the people here until last night had never heard an Indian preacher. Your relationship with Indians was the convenience store. And uh, to see our brother preach is to say, we can make disciples in India. If you see at the bottom of the map, Kochi is highlighted there, and it is, uh, it is at the very bottom in southern India. It is in the state of Kerala. Now, uh, uh, just the other night, uh, Pastor uh, Pakir Raj was telling me about this particular state. Uh, it has no fellowship churches. There are uh, 35 million people in that state. And not a single fellowship church. But he had mentioned to me, he said that he had been there, and he said that there was something very powerful about the men in that state. He said something told him the men of this state can make powerful disciples. Amen. And uh, you know, we had this conversation, and then I was talking with Pastor Wacker today, and we were talking about the, uh, another city, a city that he had talked about for some time, and we kind of let it go at that, but then uh, uh, late this afternoon contacted me and just said, I don't know what it is, but I feel drawn right here to the very city that uh, Pastor Pakia Raja told me about him, and so we are very excited about the privilege of preaching gospel. <laughs> Only an hour flight away from Colombo, Sri Lanka, also. And so we thank God uh, for that. We want to announce tonight going to pioneer a new church in Frankfurt, Germany. Tony and Lourdes Cisneros. Cliff and I went to Mexico, uh, to Frankfurt uh, back in May for the rally and had a wonderful uh, revival and uh, leadership or in a uh, rally that was there. It was very powerful there. It really opened my eyes. America has a bias against Germany. Uh, culturally, because of the war, uh, uh, you know, we have this idea about Germany, but I want to tell you, I found uh, outstanding believers. There's a revival, particularly among the immigrants, uh, they're getting saved, uh, and, uh, and it reminded me of going to preach in London back in the early 90s. Uh, very, very powerful. I, uh, you know, I began to really pray for that. I talked to Pastor Frank Schwer, outstanding uh, a, a brother there. I began to pray about this and asking God to open a door and give us a couple. And uh, Tony and Lourdes uh, went to the Paz Bolivia when the, when the Guterres had to come out. Uh, suddenly, uh, they were just uh, disciples in the Mexico City Church, had been on an invasion team, got a touch of heart, and just, uh, you know, opened the door, responded, did an outstanding job for us there in La Paz. He has spent the last four years as the assistant there, a very powerful church, a leadership there in Mexico City. And uh, as we began to pray and talk today, uh, and when I asked him about his interest, he immediately that this is God. If you were here the other night, uh, Pastor Balk actually gave him a word. At the time, I had no idea. Nobody had, you know, but, but God was involved in this. What is very interesting is, uh, is it, uh, that uh, Tony and his family are actually German. And I don't know if you noticed, you don't look Mexican. <laughs> but uh, uh, is it two generations, three generations? Third generation. Fourth. Fourth generation. And uh, left Germany, uh, ended up in Mexico. Um, Chase out of Germany, pretty much. <laughs> During the whole, yeah. So uh, her grandmother fled the rise of the Nazis, ended up in Mexico, and uh, her grandson's gotten radically saved. He's gonna go back there now. Appreciate <laughs> that. Amen. 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 One more we want to announce going into Shenzhen, China, out of San Antonio, Brent and Sarah Harris.
Jeremiah, if you've ever talked to Brent, you know all he wants to do is go to China. In fact, when Brent and Sarah were engaged to be married in the October conference, they volunteered to go. Uh, I assumed they were going to get married first, but uh, they, they put themselves out there to go, and uh, this has been their heart. They have been preparing for this, uh, and we began to pray about it. When I sat down with them to talk about the details, everything was totally in order debt, no debt, uh, their lease was up, uh, uh, you know, it was like, uh, it was like, uh, I, I almost expected him to tell me he had his visas already in hand. <laughs> but uh, China has been a jewel in our fellowship. Their Bible conference is going on simultaneously. They're 13 hours ahead, so the Bible conference is over. Uh, or no, I guess it'll be Friday. And so uh, they're doing this with the, tonight. There's a wonderful fellowship. In China. We have some outstanding young people here from China tonight. Uh, you heard Alfonso Galindo's testimony, Renee's, uh, Pastor Chris is going to give it tomorrow night, uh, and uh, it is a, just a tremendous uh, privilege uh, to be involved in China, and uh, by the grace of God, he's allowed us uh, to do that. And so we thank God for every one of these churches. Uh, and we thank So um, uh, now we need to pay for this. So as you can tell, this is a lot. This is a real challenge. The McAllen Church and, and the uh, uh, Austin Church are going to uh, pick up the responsibility of these couples, but we need to help move these people there. We have these other responsibilities tonight in these churches, and it is going to cost us a tremendous amount of money uh, to do this. We cannot do it to be a token. The Apostle Paul said these words in Romans 1. He says, I do, not, I, I, now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. And listen to what Paul says. He says, I am a debtor both to Gentiles and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. The Apostle Paul said that he was a debtor. I want you to think about that term. I heard a very interesting story the other day on the radio. Deshaun Watson is the quarterback of the uh, Houston Texans. And Deshaun Watson uh, was in the news because he got his first game check. In the NFL, they pay you every week uh, when you play a game. He got his very first game check. He's a rookie. And uh, he was in the news because he got his game check and he gave it to three stadium workers that the stadium there in Houston who had lost their homes in the flood. And so the media was there, he gave it to them, and, and uh, they were very moved. But what was really interesting <coughs> is they said that one of the reasons that he did this is because when he was 11 years old, he lived in a broken uh, family, and he was living in a shack, and a football player by the name of Warwick Gunn, who played for the Atlanta, Fal Atlanta Falcons, working with Habitat for Humanity, gave his family a house. He's 11 years old. He says that that home lifted him out of a, a neighborhood of drugs and poverty and violence, and they gave him an opportunity. He's just an 11-year-old kid. Now you fast forward about uh, 12 years, he is now a professional football player, and he gets his first check, uh, and he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to remember that somebody did this for me when I'm 11 years old. Uh, I'm going to make it possible for somebody else. Amen. Or in other words, Deshaun Watson was a debtor. He understood that uh, what I have isn't my own. If I have something, it's because I owe something. Can I tell you tonight, you are a debtor. If you have money, you have resources, uh, you do, do not think that somehow you've got this on your own and you're, you're free and clear. You and I are a debtor, and we have this picture of Paul's motivation. In other words, Paul says, I didn't do what I did for glory. My ambition is to have my name known. My ambition is not to have money or fame or recognition. He says, you want to know why I do what I do? I do it because I feel that I owe. I owe. The word means uh, one who owes something to another. 
It's primarily in regard to money. It's the idea of a slave who could own property and then become a debtor to his master who might at any time seize him for payment. Let me ask you a question. I can only imagine only two or three of you could identify with this. But how many of you have ever been in debt? <laughs> how many know when you get in debt, you start getting red border letters in the mail? You start getting phone calls. I've known people that have put on their answer machine. If you're a, if you're a collector, uh, no, I'm not home. And, uh, you know, people who do this. I remember a brother telling me once he, he, he got a, a, a check in the mail. He's like, oh, man, he ripped it open. And it said, uh, do you want to see a check like this? So do we from you. <laughs> If you know what it is to have a debt and to have that sense of obligation on you, Paul says, I am a debtor. That is why I do what I do. And he's writing to the Romans and he says, I'm going to go to you knowing full well he's going to be arrested and probably killed. But so what? I'm a debtor. I'm in debt. And this debt is as a compulsion to him. It's deciding his destiny. It's taking him somewhere. The question is, who are we in debt to? pretty clear what the Apostle Paul says is you and I are in debt to Jesus Christ. He paid a debt we could not pay. I owed, or I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. Yeah. Jesus Christ, beloved, is the one that we owe everything to tonight. But what's interesting is Paul says we service that debt by reaching Gentiles and barbarians. We serve our debt to Jesus Christ by reaching souls, by reaching the laws. That's how you serve it. Uh, you can be on your knees praying. That's great. We can lift our hands and sing. Uh, but I want to tell you, according to this verse, uh, he says you service it when you and I are involved in world evangelism. He says, as I reach the barbarians, as I reach the Gentiles, I am servicing this deep awareness that I owe everything to Jesus Christ. And that is the motivation. Why are these couples doing this tonight? Why are they up here? Brother uh, uh, Wacker has been talking about, I, I checked, the average temperature in the month of April there in the city is going to, it's 104 degrees, that's the average temperature. I hope you already knew that. <laughs> Why would this young couple in Mexico City go to a place that's been devastated by an earthquake? Why would Brent and Sarah Harris, a young couple with tremendous opportunities, they could be yuppies, go to China and minister the gospel? You know why? Because they have a debt. Because in that debt is a compulsion and it takes you places. Because the only way to pay that debt is to reach souls minister the gospel. The Apostle Paul wrote to a man named Philemon. He was a rich man. May I say to him, may I remind you that compared to the rest of the world, we are the richest people in the whole world. He wrote to a man named Philemon. And he says, Paul, I'm, uh, I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay. He's asking him to take care of a guy named Onesimus. But then he says these words to Philemon. He says, not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self. Mm. Paul reminds this rich brother, you owe me. Because he wanted this man, remember this guy's a, a, a lord over a house, he's a master of a house, he's a wealthy man. But he'd given his life to Jesus Christ. And Paul reminds him, you are a debtor. All that you have, all that you have, given to you by God. And now a young man has gone back and Paul's reminding him, you know how you paid your debt for Nesmus or, or, or by mom? You serve this barbarian. And as you serve people, and you minister to people, you service this wonderful debt that was paid by Jesus Christ. And so that's the issue tonight. That issue this evening is will you and I Understand your debtors. And will that deep sense of obligation compel us to sacrifice tonight? And I'd like these uh, children to come.
Children's Church of Bayview. Receiving offerings for world evangelism all week. Bow your head. 